Let's take a trip to the future. Imagine we are on a journey to Mars. It's a long ways away, and we're going to get hungry. And when we do, would you rather eat this piece of perfectly balanced protein goop or this delightful piece of Parmesan cheese? Not so. Uh, but that means you have to bring these guys. And guess what? Producing just one pound of cheese requires 16 bathtubs of fresh water, releases as many emissions as burning 10 pounds of coal, and would require land needed to produce about 100 pounds of potatoes. Clearly, that's not happening. OK, you say, so farming cows on Mars seems rather foolish. But guess what? It's pretty crazy even here on Earth. Producing livestock for food today takes up an enormous amount of land. In fact, today, livestock occupies the size of North and South America combined. Put together, livestock also produces a lot of methane, which, as you know, is 80 times more powerful at warming the planet than CO2, making livestock the largest source of methane emissions on the planet today. Put together, the livestock today produce more emissions than the entire United States. And the problem is getting worse. The demand for meat and dairy is projected to increase about 70% by 2050, putting us on a collision course with nature. But who wants a world without cheese? I don't. So to keep our cheese, along with other favorite dairy foods, we really need to reinvent dairy. And I'm not talking about efficiency improvements and biogas digesters and feed additives. I am talking about a whole system redesign. I'm talking about making dairy, without the cows. Um, not, it's not about soy milk either. That's been around for millennia. It's a wonderful product, but it's not dairy. Today, I want to talk to you about something new. I want to talk to you about a way of making real dairy without the cows. And we can do that by using a process called precision fermentation. Precision fermentation is essentially a biotech upgrade to a traditional fermentation process where we can create any molecule we want by using microbes. The way we do this is we essentially use biotechnology to copy and paste a part of DNA code that codes for, say, milk protein, creating unique milk-making microbes. We then take these microbes and place them in giant fermentation tanks, very similar to those that are used to brew beer, but instead of beer, we're now brewing dairy. At the end of the fermentation process, we filter out the chosen proteins, creating a unique, uh, basically a milk protein powder. And because we use the same genetic code to create this powder, it is identical to what comes from a cow on taste, texture, and nutrition. Pretty cool, right? And because we skipped the cow in the process, the climate benefits are tremendous. Here's just one example of a company that recently completed a full life cycle analysis producing milk protein through fermentation, comparing it to producing milk protein by farming animals. And what they found is that they had 97% fewer greenhouse gas emissions, 99% less water, 98% less land, and needed 60% less renewable energy. This is incredible. And because we're not relying on large swaths of land and water to farm animals, it provides an amazing step change to this technology. So this is what a dairy cow farm of the future could look like. Imagine having one of those outside of every city, dramatically reducing the climate footprint of dairy production. Just one precision fermentation facility could not only replace the output of a 10,000 dairy cow farm, but it also can save 2.2 million pounds of methane per year in the process. And because we're not reliant on large swaths of arable land, we can even grow dairy in the desert. And you think that sounds exciting and kind of futuristic, but guess what? That's actually already happening. Uh, it's in the process. Um, here's an example of one such facility that is planned to be built in the UAE in the next couple of years. 
So that's a good start. How do we make this go big by 2030? And we really need to do three things. First is we need to continue to invest in R&D. Precision fermentation is a technology that has been used in the industry for the last 30 years. It is already commercially used and available in medicine, in cosmetics, and in materials. And within this decade, it's going to be price competitive and commercial within food. Two is we need to invest in manufacturing capacity. The demand for precision fermentation within food is projected to get to about $36 billion within this decade. However, the facilities to do so do not exist today. A recent analysis by Ernst & Young estimates that we need to build about 200 million liters of fermentation capacity. That means multiples of the same kind of precision fermentation facilities that I showed you sprung all over the world and around major cities. That needs investment. And the third thing we need to do is we need to bring large food companies on board. Many of them today have already declared their net zero ambition and are working on a number of initiatives to get there. In fact, dairy companies are already also jumping on board and are starting to think about how do they get to net zero and are, again, implementing some of these things. However, while commendable, they are inherently limited. They're limited because farming animals for food requires large amounts of land, large amounts of water, large amounts of feed, and produces those methane emissions. So it's hard to imagine how we get to a truly sustainable dairy without addressing the cow in the room. I'll give you one particular example. <laughs> Here is Tillamook Farms, and as you can see, 80% of the carbon footprint of cheese comes from cows. Yes, we can chip away at those emissions with methane digesters and feed additives and all kinds of projects, but even the most ambitious dairy companies today are targeting about a 30% decrease in their emissions by 2030. Now put this back together with an increase in production that we're anticipating. And it makes me wonder, where does that leave us? So I say, it's time to start making dairy without the cows. And when we do this, if we're able to decarbonize dairy by 2030, the benefit is significant. If we decarbonize dairy, we can remove more emissions than decarbonizing the entire aviation industry, not to mention the benefits like reducing land use, deforestation, biodiversity loss, etc. And precision fermentation is not limited to milk protein specifically. Remember, it's a way of producing any protein of choice. Already today, companies are working on making egg proteins without farming chickens, meat proteins without farming pigs, and even fats and oils without growing acres and acres of palm trees. And replacing the familiar is where we begin, but this technology is very exciting because it enables us to innovate and create products that are more nutritious, that are more sustainable, and that are honestly just more exciting because it opens up a very creative avenue for us to explore new foods. And by scaling precision fermentation, what gets me excited is it really allows us to reduce our reliance on animals for food. And by that, we can restore a lot of that land back to natural ecosystems and back to nature so that we can reimagine our total food system as thriving, sustainable, and kind. So we can have our cheese and eat it too, even on Mars. Thank you.